yeah, this unit isn't coming on. This is for our coffee bar in the office. The uh, breaker keeps tripping. You've all seen that before, I'm sure. I don't have to show that. But uh, on the bottom here, this is the, the crankcase heater for this Goodman heat pump. So I'm going to check that first. Just going to pull the wires off and then check it. It's just this black one and this pink one on the bottom here. All right, I've got my Supco M500 Mega Omer hooked up to the crankcase heater. One lead on the chassis, one lead on the on the wire, and it's showing that it's good. It's not going into the red. It's not a good sign. Not good. I think it's going to be the compressor. So now I'm going to pull this yellow wire off. The power is off, by the way. It keeps popping the breaker, so the breaker's off. Disconnect is pulled as well. So I'm going to pull this yellow wire off the capacitor, which is the Herm. It's my start winding. I can bring it down lower. Check it with my Mega Omer. One lead on the chassis there, and one lead on the start winding off the Herm of the compressor. And there's the red light showing bad. Got a bad compressor. Uh, not good. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pop the top and unplug the compressor and then turn the breaker back on. And if it turns back on, I know that's the culprit, which I'm pretty sure it is. Bad. All right, bro, so this is a, the bad compressor. <laughs> It was bad. I'm over here by the gym and by the corporate office. This is the office AC, so I'm not able to do go in depth and have the tripod out and calls in a scene. But it kept tripping the breaker. So what I do, what I did on the old one yesterday is I unplugged it. Just unplugged the compressor. Then I went and turned the breaker back on. Then it fired up. The fan came on. So all the tests pointed towards the bad compressor. So now I'm going to do that filter dryer. Goodman, I want to thank you guys for putting it inside the unit. Okay? Yeah, so we got to remove all this to get to the filter dryer in there. I'm going to do my best to film as much as I can. There's a lot of coming and going over here by the, by the office. So I want people to Why are you filming? People stopping, you know. What's going on? Why are you filming? This is the true suction port. I'm gonna take that little nut off. I'm gonna take these out over here, this and this, and just try to pull that forward so I can get to the to the filter dryer. Appreciate it, Goodman. Gee whiz, look at that. I had to take all that off. Look at that. And they wonder why no one wants to do it. You know what I mean? And they wonder why no one does it. I'm going to also loosen that screw, take it out, that way I can lift it up a little bit. Yeah, sorry if it's hard to see. It's the best place I can put the camera without being in the way. I sprayed my pressure switch up here with some of this cool gel. So, keep it cool while I sweat this filter dryer off. my wife's oven mitt 
can grab any hot pipe you want with this baby. She doesn't even know I have it. She's been looking for it for months. Good thing she doesn't watch the Dirty Maintenance Show. Give the pipe a good sanding. Get to some good copper. You see me do this on my other videos, my coil change out ones. Yeah, this one's a little bit bigger. Goodman's got that bend down there. It's hard to see. I'm gonna have to lay down and braise the bottom there. Tricky. Put a screwdriver under, that'll hold her up. Hello. Nope, I'll turn it. Best I could do for this tight place. Crisp her up a little bit, but hey, this is the real world. All right, we got the bubs on it. No bubbles, no troubles. Got a little roasted, but it's tight up in here. I'll wrap a rag around there or something next time. I think we're gonna be good. I got it under nitrogen. And for the YouTube police, yes, I do flow nitrogen. Refer to other videos. Done showing it. Tired of it. The drama. All right, dudes. It's been holding at 189 for about 45 minutes. I'm pretty confident to dump the nitrogen. I just ran out to a little emergency can came through. So I'm gonna button this debacle up and uh, pull a vacuum. We're well, getting this thing as a beast. Yeah, I cooked it a little bit, but hey, you can't have a you can't have a reality show without a little reality. It's tied up in here. Yeah, it's coming on down slowly but surely. Got to go to uh, go to about 300 microns. All right, the system is vacuumed out. Now I'm going to bring it up to positive pressure. I went with the, uh, the analogs. My Testos need a new battery. So yeah, I decided to wait and to button it up. I'm going to put some refrigerant in it, and then I'm going to run over the uh, my brazes with the leak detector. Just so I can sleep better at night. So I'm going to bring it up to positive pressure. I'm going to bleed my line.
throw it in on the liquid side. Just bringing up the positive pressure. It's not rocket science. Then I'm gonna roll over my brazes with the leak detector. That's what's going on. All right, I got refrigerant and the system. Now I'll just roll over my brazes with my leak detector here. It goes off. Start all over again. gonna do it it ring off by now I think we're gonna be good to go all right now I'm gonna button up this debacle uh, this is a four ton Goodman heat pump by the way so if you're doing a heat pump make sure you get the filter dryer goes both ways or it'd be a nightmare if you looked and that arrow was going one way Oh yeah, and real quick for you new guys, the easiest way to deal with this is I mark these. Take a sharpie and mark the wires. So this one goes here, and the other one goes here. Probably hard to see, right there. And you gotta undo the crankcase heater too and slide it up. Total pain in the boot. I'm gonna plug the compressor back in just plugs into there just go boom plug it in like a wall socket all right let me button it up all right compressors plugged in we're running let's go get a wet bulb get a good super heat oh yeah it's moving some nice heat off the top got me a new field piece psychrometer Lisa good bro Looks like the old wet bulb is going to be, well, we'll see, 62 degrees. The gym's over here by it, so it's helping it out. The gym's working good. 62 degree wet bulb. I'll leave a link to one of these in the description below. Get you one. All right, there's our measurements. Indoor wet bulb, 62. Condenser dry bulb, 90. Vapor pressure, 144. Vapor line, 67. Calculate, add charge, current superheat 17, recommended five. I'm gonna go a little above that. We'll go around nine-ish. When you get zero, man, that means you got liquid coming back to your compressor. That's just a little too close for comfort, but that's what we'll do. All right, 58 degree line tip. 50 degree saturation. So that's an 8 degree superheat. Alright, it's blowing out nice and chilly inside. Moving some good heat off the top. That's a good. Got some good sweat on the lines. Whew, just out here making memories, kid. It's 102 degrees today. And uh, a lot of guys ask, hey, do you do compressors when they go out in? I sure do, but it's very rare, guys. Very rare. Probably once a year, if that, because they're still fairly new. They're only six years old, so. And I started here in 2015, so. It's my once a year, but yeah, I do compressors. And uh, I'll go into a uh, better video some other time when it's not around the office. A lot of traffic here. And, but there's a lot of compressor videos out there, guys. A lot, of, a lot of guys got compressor videos that are way more professional than I am, so I'd go check those out. All right, that's it. Thank you all for watching the Dirty Maintenance Show.